Hi, I'm Tom Intier. Space Shuttle Atlantis is less than 50 miles away from the end of the runway at Edwards Air Force Base. They're going to come in at runway 22. Here is a live picture from a tracking camera of the shuttle. What uh, brought us to this point, uh, it was a deorbit burn that occurred about an hour ago that begins the glide. 2.41 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, they started that deorbit burn to slow the shuttle down. They actually flip it over and fly it backwards, fire two maneuvering rockets for a little over two minutes, and that slows the shuttle enough so it could glide. They attain atmospheric entry at uh, 3.13 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time and uh, continue to slow down as they approach the uh, re-entry. They're really moving at about 16,500 miles an hour. Now, that'll slow down to landing speed that relates to about 213 to 226 miles an hour. For uh, something that large, uh, it uh, is still moving along pretty good. The orbiter weight... Uh, it changes somewhat. At liftoff, they were at 217,513 pounds, but Magellan was very heavy. Once they come back, they'll weigh definitely a lot less. At landing, they'll weigh 192,313 pounds. The mission length, four days, 56 minutes, if they touch down on time, and they usually do. Here you can see uh, in the one picture, a live picture of Atlantis as it streaks across the clouds. There are a couple of sonic booms that you hear uh, on landing. Uh, CNN's Tony Clark uh, rejoins us now uh, from Houston. Tony? There's the sonic booms. Shuttle. The actual landing itself, how much are the, the commander and the pilot really involved in controlling the vehicle? They are totally controlling the vehicle at that time. It's uh, exactly as... Uh, if you were flying your own aircraft. What does it physically feel like as you're sitting there? If the pilot does a good job, as both of uh, mine did, you hardly know when you touch down. It is so smooth. Winds 280 at 8, gust to 16. Roger that. We're hearing some of the, the last, some of the final instructions from Mission control Atlantis to the uh, shuttle as it uh, per second, heads in. Feet, Physically, the sensation of going from microgravity to uh, the Earth's gravity, is it uh, surprising? Well, it, you know that you have a totally different body. You cannot believe how heavy everything is on return. Now, right now, uh, we heard a, a short time ago they were going at uh, Mach 2.8. You were saying that's, a, that's about like flying in some of the, the fighter jets. Well, that's about the upper limits of what our best fighters can reach. And now what they're doing, their problem, though, is to reduce the speed. Officer, uh, the the other astronauts that are on board, the mission specialists, Tony, we're, we're, yes, uh, we're now, uh, we now have a very clear, let's listen in as they make their turn. Velocity now 600 feet per second, altitude 14,000 feet. All right, Seven to give you an idea of what the uh, commander is looking at, the uh, box in your lower right, this is a heads-up display that he's looking at on a computer screen. And uh, as they uh, make their turn around and uh, get ready to line up on Atlantis. runway 22, on uh, this is uh, what he would line. see on his glide slope. 280 at 8, gust to 16, 7, peak 12 from the right. The shuttle basically acts as a large glider. That uh, last-minute uh, wind information being passed to pilot Ron Graby and Commander Dave Walker. Atlantis now five miles from the runway at a velocity of 500 feet per second, altitude 6,000 feet. Altitude 2,500 feet. And Walker will be taking the vehicle into the pre-flare maneuver, adjusting the glide slope to 1.5 degrees. Landing gear down and locked. Main gear touchdown. No 
nose gear touchdown. Normally you uh, see that front wheel touch down, but with the last minute change, and I do mean the last minute change of going from runway 17, where they were all set for the uh, arrival of Atlantis, to runway 22, left them a little bit out of position for the cameras. You see uh, some of the uh, trucks Atlantis that are moving back into position. On runway 22 at Edwards. They were expecting uh, eight knot crosswinds. The uh, convoy was uh, set up again on runway 17. They had to uh, move over to 22. Take care of all the uh, post landing activity uh, following a safe homecoming. Four days and 56 minutes, but the major objective was accomplished on day one. That was the. Congratulations, Magellan nice spacecraft. You've extended the shuttle's reach far beyond Earth orbit now. Commodore Magellan would approve. Roger that. Thank you, Frank. Commodore Magellan. He uh, this spacecraft that was sent on its way to Venus, named after the Portuguese explorer, the first to sail around the world, and uh, if he were here today, would. Uh, probably find it very difficult to believe that uh, men are no longer going around the Atlanta world in Houston, sailing ships. No post-landing deltas. So they say there is no problem with the uh, orbiter. They're on the ground. They're safely back. We, of course, will have continuing coverage, and we'll be back in just a moment. About five minutes ago, Atlantis streaked over the California coastline, touched down at Edwards Air Force Base on runway 22. A little last minute drama when they made a change. They were supposed to land on runway 17, but they had high gusty winds, a little too high for NASA officials, and they decided at the last minute to change runways. Once again, four day, 56 minute mission of Atlantis has come to a close with a safe return at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Roger, Ohm's RCS saping. Thank you, Dave. You can see the picture of the convoy now making their way. They had to travel several miles away. Let's take now another look about five minutes back as Atlantis uh, came down majestically out of the sky. And uh, Dr. Thornton, if you're uh, joining us there in Houston, uh, the, the feeling must be pretty fantastic if you look out the window. And also, you come back with a different body than when you left. You are now making the transition from space back to Earth, and you are beginning, for example, to feel the weight of external objects. Is there any way that a, a person who perhaps who could uh, perhaps I don't know flies in an airplane or any any kind of way to describe it so that that our viewers might be able to compare it with anything? Is there any kind of comparison for the feeling? Not uh, not really. It would be difficult. Uh, as I indicated, there is a bit of uh, bump coming back, um, but not really. The touchdowns are very smooth, the rollout, all of that. Dr. Is, Thornton, uh, you've got about 3,300 hours flying in a jet aircraft. Uh, uh, most people do their flying as a passenger. Uh, what's the difference between, uh, say, flying on a commercial aircraft and, and flying as a, as a payload specialist or a mission specialist here? We've had uh, congressmen and senators uh, who have uh, flown on this. Uh, could just about anybody strap themselves in one of the back seats and go along for the ride? That's theoretically possible. It may not be desirable. Certainly the physical factors are not that great. It's a little bit of a rough ride coming back, but not enough to disturb anyone. Touchdowns are very smooth. It's far more interesting looking at the aspects, so from a pilot's viewpoint, because remember, when you're 2,000 feet above the ground, you still have a sink rate of uh, five or 6,000 feet per minute. And uh, ordinary pilots aren't used to that kind of thing. What's going on right now? We hear conversations back and forth from Mission Control periodically to the shuttle. Is it a busy time? Yes. Now they are closing the various systems down, as it were, putting uh, the shuttle to rest. Also, the individuals are now beginning to bring their own bodies back into 1G. Dr. Thornton, let's. Uh, I want to ask you something about uh, you're a medical doctor and you've been in space. This mission uh, was 
only scheduled to last, or really could have only lasted one day. The primary objective was uh, to launch Magellan, but the readaptation that takes place, uh, you have to be ready for coming back to Earth. Uh, is that the primary reason why they stayed up on nearly five days? No, not really. I wouldn't consider that necessary. I think NASA has some rules uh, which changes a bit from time to time that uh, three days would get them past, safely past any space motion sickness. But if you had to, you could return uh, in less than four or five days. It's, uh, and remember, it's the other way around. The longer that you stay in space, uh, the more use the body gets to it and the more difficulty you have on return. Well, they didn't seem to have any difficulty on return. The Atlantis crew is back. Here